the massacre at Abbey Ardain. For Greg Pollard, it was a war crime that wounded more than one generation. The details of what happened, we didn't get. Yeah. Lance Corporal George Pollard of Cornwall, Ontario, murdered on the 17th of June, 1944. His body never recovered. The commander of the 12th SS Panzer Division was tried as a war criminal and sentenced to prison in 1945. George Pollard's family, including his mother, Ethel, watched the trial with horror and disbelief. She would not believe that he was murdered, even though she had all the documents, uh, all, all the newspaper clippings. My dad, his sister, George's brothers, grew up with my grandmother telling us, Georgie's still alive. Georgie's not dead. No body, he's not dead. My grandmother lived 99 years thinking that he was coming through the kitchen door. Greg Pollard is George Pollard's nephew. Haunted by his grandmother's grief, he spent two decades researching the fate of his uncle and the doomed patrol that led to his capture. To unravel the mystery, he needed a map and the help of three unlikely friends who share a passion for military history and who have embarked on an extraordinary project to retrace Canada's Normandy campaign. They have spent months rummaging through boxes at Library and Archives Canada pouring over records not seen in three quarters of a century and digitizing them. If you can see right here, this is a unit narrative for, I want to say, 5th uh, Field Company, Royal Canadian Engineers. All these units would have been keeping this diary daily right until the war ended. Tens of thousands of documents, all poured into this a digital interactive map that tracks the movements day by day of every Canadian regiment that fought in the Normandy campaign. So, June 17th with the William Pollard Patrol. This is the storm at Dundas Glengarry Highlanders. Somewhere in this field is where that patrol would have been machine gunned. So, uh, Lieutenant Williams and uh, Lance Corporal Pollard would have been left out in this field and then captured by the Germans. Nathan Kelleher knows the cold fear of war. He's a reservist and map maker, but served with the Royal Canadian Dragoons, the tanks, in Kandahar, and hopes to someday digitally map that campaign. Having served in Afghanistan, one day I'm gonna to have to tell my kids my story, and I wanna have a way of showing that. But before I develop a project like that, I, I feel I need to do this project first. It was in the area. But to be able to properly tell this story, he had to speak to someone who was there. This is the... Uh, front line, so to speak. Former warrant officer George Fouchard, 97. A cartographer in the Canadian Army during the Second World War, he drew the maps Canadian troops used on Juneau Beach and throughout the Normandy campaign. The Army can get along with, without any underwear. They can't get along without any maps. The team wanted George's insight. They were surprised many of the maps they pulled from the archives were the ones that he had drawn maps George had not seen in 75 years. I mean, overall, that really helped the soldiers at the front because we've talked about it before, the Germans, they didn't have the quality of maps that no. we had. The quality and superiority of Allied maps was, in George's estimation, an underappreciated key to victory. Because that's what, uh, you know, the higher-ups had to know was where these people were. And it comes right down to the soldiers that they want to know what, where they're going and what they're doing. And that leads us back to Greg Pollard, the SS massacre at Abbey Ardain, and a reproduction of the map his murdered uncle's patrol would have used the night they were captured. This is closure. It helps put things in perspective. And that's, that's amazing. I'm just glad we could help. And like the Allies, the project team does not intend to stop in Normandy. They plan to digitally map the entire Canadian campaign in Europe in time for VE Day anniversary celebrations next year. Marie Brewster, CBC News, Ottawa.